in this video we will be finding our relative molecular orbital energies for benzene which remember is our C6H6 ring which is aromatic and in the last video we found these as our symmetry adapted group orbitals right here and so we had these first two which are A and B then these two here which are the degenerate orbitals so these are the, as I said, SAGOs here, the symmetry adapted group orbitals formed from the P atomic orbitals on each carbon of the benzene. So the SAGOs will be linearly combined to form the uh, sulk MO, so the symmetry adapted linear combination molecular orbitals, uh, which will look like this. So we have our molecular orbital here, and then we have these C's here, which are the coefficients, which tell us about the contribution of each one of these SAGOs here to the sulk MO. And so each of these will have a different values for the coefficients. Uh, and so they represent the contribution of each SAGO uh, to the sulk MOs. And so we have this following secular determinant here. Uh, since the SAGOs are orthonormal, we have that the Sij is equal to the uh, delta or the Kronecker delta here. And since only the Psi1 has the A1 symmetry, we need that the H1j equals H, J1 equals 0, when J doesn't equal 1. Uh, and so the same thing for the Psi2, which has the B symmetry. Uh, so the H2j and Hj2 equals 0, when the J does not equal 2. And then so for the Psi3 and Psi4, which have the E1 symmetry, uh, we have that the H3J and HJ3 equals 0 when J isn't equal to 3. And so the same thing for the uh, H4J and HJ4 when J isn't equal to 4. Uh, however, the symmetry, uh, we cannot determine uh, the H3, 4, and H4, 3. Uh, so the same goes for the Psi 5 and the Psi 6 for our E2 representation here. Uh, we then have this as our determinant right here. So we've been able to simplify this a little bit. And so we have sort of this one by one determinant, or these two one by one determinants, and then these two two by two determinants, uh, which are these ones right here. Uh, since the H12 equals H13 equals H14 equals H15 equals H16 equals 0, we know that the psi 1 does not interact with the other molecular orbitals. And similarly, for the uh, for the H21, H23, so on, equaling 0, so the psi 2 doesn't interact with the other molecular orbitals. So these uh, SAGOs are the sulk MOs. Uh, we then have the uh, psi 3 and psi 4, which linearly combine. Uh, if the H23 uh, is not equal to the, or is equal to the H43, and similarly for the psi 5 and psi 6. And so we have to evaluate these uh, integrals, so the H34 and H56 here. So we have the H34, which is our psi 3 and psi 4 with the Hamiltonian operator. So we put in the symmetry of group orbitals for those psi's there, uh, and we end up with this big long thing here. Uh, but we can invoke the, the Huckel's uh, approximation that atomic orbitals only interact with their neighbors. And so we have this equaling beta only if i is equal to j plus or minus 1. Uh, and if it's uh, not plus or minus 1, then it equals 0. Uh, and that's only when we have that i and j are not equal to each other. So the energy of the atomic orbitals is when I and J are equal to each other, and we'll, we'll call that alpha. And so we have beta here when they're not equal to each other, but they're only one away from each other. Uh, and so we therefore have this. Uh, so we substitute in all those alphas and betas, and that will actually be equal to zero, meaning that the psi 3 and psi 4 do not interact. Uh, we could do the same 
analysis for psi 5 and psi 6, which means that our six symmetry adapted group orbitals from above are our symmetry adapted linear combination molecular orbitals. And it also means that our 2D determinants reduce to two 1D determinants. Uh, so I will use these E with the 1 and 2 in parentheses here for the energies of the psi 1 and psi 2. Uh, then this E with the 3, 4 in parentheses for the energies of the psi 3 and psi 4, since those are degenerate orbitals and have the same energy. Uh, since the if we just did the E, uh, subscript 3 and 4 here would be equal. And so it's the same thing for the E, 5, 6 for our psi 5 and psi 6 here. Uh, so like I said, because of the E, irreducible representations indicate degeneracy. And so we have for the E1 here, which is just our H11, uh, is equal to this right here. And so we substitute in our Sagos here for it. And what we end up getting is our E1 is equal to the alpha plus 2 beta. And so we do the same thing for the E2 here, and we get alpha minus 2 beta. And so recall that alpha and beta are negative, and so that our alpha plus 2 beta is actually going to be less than our alpha minus 2 beta, because minus a negative number is uh, addition, and so uh, that will actually be larger. So for the other two energies, uh, we so we'll look at the psi 3 and psi 6 here, because we know that the, uh, the psi uh, 4 and the psi 5 will have to have the same energy. So we only have to solve this for one of these each. And so if we do this for the E34, we put in our Sagos on here, and we will end up getting alpha plus B, or alpha plus beta rather. Then for our E5 and 6, uh, we do this for our H66. We put in our Sagos here, and we will end up getting alpha minus beta. And so our energy levels are this. So we have as our lowest energy the alpha plus 2 beta, then the alpha plus beta, then our alpha minus beta, and our alpha minus 2 beta. We see that this alpha plus beta has the psi 3 and psi 4 and the alpha minus beta as the psi 5 and psi 6. And we see that this right here uh, will start going above alpha because remember uh, minus a negative is plus and so in these two top ones here we are actually higher than alpha which recall alpha is our atomic orbital energy. And so these two here will be molecular orbitals with energies higher than the atomic orbitals. And these two here will be molecular orbitals with energies lower than the atomic orbitals, which means that these two here will be our bonding molecular orbitals, and these two will be our anti-bonding molecular orbitals. And so that will give us a molecular orbital diagram that looks like this. And so we have our these three uh, alpha atomic orbitals here, these three alpha atomic orbitals here. Uh, so we end up getting these six uh, molecular orbitals. So we have our alpha plus two beta, our alpha plus beta as our bonding, then our alpha minus beta and alpha minus two beta as our anti-bonding here. And remember, each of these is bringing in a single electron. So we have six total electrons. And so we have these three bonding orbitals filled here, these three bonding molecular orbitals filled here. Uh, so if we remember, we had our, our benzene ring, which looked like uh, which looked like this, it was a six membered ring. Uh, and so we kind of draw it oftentimes with these three pi bonds here. And so those three pi bonds come from these three pi uh, molecular orbitals right here. Uh, and so that's where those those bonds come from. But if we recall, these uh, will be shared sort of around the whole ring. And so that's why you often see it drawn like this uh, with just a circle in the middle, because these are being shared 
around the entire ring. Uh, but anyway, these are the the molecular orbitals for the pi bonds on our benzene ring, on our aromatic ring here. Uh, and so this is sort of where these uh, relative energies come from. Uh, but anyway, uh, in the next couple videos, I will be looking at uh, at a conjugate, a conjugated uh, linear molecule, 1,3-butadiene, uh, which we will actually find will end up uh, making it so we don't have the luxury of, of uh, where was that? Well, we, we will have the molecular orbital start interacting, and so we won't have the luxury of being able to sort of reduce these to two one-dimensional determinants here. And so there will be something a little bit different going on there. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.